The Chicago Lakefront Trail is an 18 and a half mile long paved path located along the western shore of Lake Michigan in Chicago, Illinois. The trail passes through and connects Chicago's four major lakefront parks, along with various beaches and recreational amenities. On a busy summer day, over 66,666 cyclists, walkers, and joggers may use the trail. Hi, I'm Bob Robinson. Come join us as we explore the past, present, and future of Chicago's favorite multi-use public lakeside byway. Hi, I'm Rob Bobson, here at the Chicago Parks District Burnham Wildlife Corridor, a sanctuary for birds, insects, rodents, and even coyotes. <laughs> the native prairie, savanna, and woodland ecosystems of the Burnham Wildlife Corridor provide a healthy, diverse habitat for migratory birds and other wildlife. That path is for the birds. And encourage visitors to interact with this revitalized public green space in ways that encourage stewardship, environmental conservation, and sustainability. They say you feel cooped up in the city, but I kind of felt more free. I'm standing here at a historic Chicago site. The court where basketball star Michael Jordan made the only full court slam dunk in recorded history. The impact of the dunk allegedly obliterated the netting, something that can be seen to this day. In 2018, the city began construction on the Lakefront Trail with intent to segregate the pedestrians and the cyclists into two different paths. Something that cities like Montgomery, Alabama have been doing for years. October 8th, 1871. Mrs. Catherine O'Leary's cow is left unattended with a box of matches. The result? The 11th deadliest wildfire in U.S. history. After the smoke cleared, the mounds of ash and cinders caused by the fire were then dumped into Lake Michigan. They called this heap of debris Grant Park after President Ulysses S. Grant, an acclaimed general in the American War of Northern Aggression. Grant Park, or as it's known affectionately by the locals, Cannabis Park, is a place for relaxation and reflection for people of all walks of life. Just across the harbor is Northerly Island, originally Chicago's only downtown airport. Since then, the park has been planted with prairie grasses and repurposed into a public picnic area. But before Northerly Island was an airport, it was Chicago's very own briefly realized maximum security prison, Alcatraz II built to house the city's most wanted gangsters. The prison was discontinued after Chicago's gangster, Al Capone, otherwise known as Scarface, escaped, making the impressive swim across the channel from Northern Island's southern tip to the mainland. Standing proudly on Chicago's lakeshore is the city's first and only fascist monument. It was gifted to the city in 1933 by His Excellency Benito Mussolini, but the pillar itself is much older, by over 20 centuries.
This ballad, one of five across the Burnham Harbor Corridor, pays homage to the monarch butterfly, or as it's known by the indigenous people of Mexico, terracotta. This is also a great gathering place for outdoor enthusiasts, visitors, and more than a few religious cults. Chicago has had its share of frigid weather, but the blizzard of 67 takes the cake. The sub-zero temperatures caused Lake Michigan to freeze over, leading many pathgoers to blaze their own trail on the frozen expanse. The lakefront in the summer is packed full of places to stop and relieve yourself. From cozy shacks to hickory groves, it's got it all. Unfortunately, in the cooler seasons, most of these wonderful options are closed. The McCormick Secret Oasis has saved many a runner's days. From double stall services to full body mirror, this restroom has been exceeding rugged runners' expectations since 1956. Thousands of years ago, glacial activity created a slew of rocky shoals along the western shore of Lake Michigan. Among them, Morgan Shoal, just a stone throw away from where I'm sitting now. In 1914, Morgan Shoal claimed an unsuspecting victim, a boat known as the Silver Spray. Too far to swim to shore, the crew inevitably perished. Now, only the ship's rusted metal frame remains. The shipwreck, just underneath the surface of the water, can be seen at low tide. Learning Illinois is made possible by Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, and by viewers like you. Thank you.